Okay, so I guess we're doing another quick bit video. I really like this format because I don't have to edit, and it's just one and done. Anyway, uh, I got a new 3D printer, and the video on that is um, still being edited. There's quite a bit of footage. I go through a montage of assembly and all that stuff. And so, anyway, that's coming up. Uh, but in the meanwhile, I, um, I've been doing a lot of upgrades to it. And one of the things uh, required some bearings, and I ordered some from China. Uh, I could have got them locally for, a, you know, multiple times more of the price, but I wanted, like, to get, you know, a decent amount, like 20 or 30 of them, and for as cheap as possible. So I just ordered some from China, but while I'm waiting for those to arrive, I started thinking, well, I have this 3D printer, and I, I would be highly surprised if no one has, has some sort of model for a 3D printer bearing. And lo and behold, I found tons of models. And two in particular were interesting. There's there's three kinds in general. Uh, one kind uses like uh, external metal or plastic BBs from like pellet guns. And those I think are actually the most effective ones in general. Um, if you lubricate them, they will probably be the most reliable. However, I kind of really like the idea of print in place uh, bearings that you just print off and then they're good to go. That's, it's just, I don't know, something very clever about that. I, I like the idea. So what I did was I printed out in uh, gold filament a load of uh, these kind of uh, print-in-place bearings, and I printed them out in three semi-different materials, uh, different manufacturer filaments. They're all PLA, but from different manufacturers and different colors, obviously. So the first set that I printed off are these, and these are just stuck um, I printed these 0.2 um, millimeter uh, layer height. And as you can see, I, I started breaking them free. And I, I tried everything. I tried like sanding because I thought it was maybe the first few layers were sticking. And I did eventually kind of break off a small ring from the bottom. And the center point <laughs> spins <laughs> somewhat freely, but none of the other parts do. And um, I accidentally broke like the little balls inside and um so this obviously didn't really work at all and so i printed another one uh just to see i actually printed two at i actually printed two at the same time and this one here i took apart because i thought you know it's 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 a wash anyway so I might as well see what's inside these and it's actually rather interesting there's an internal oops broke apart off internal bearing race that uh like contains the actual parts that rotate and this part is uh, supposed to be free spinning as well and within that is a a center like axle that that spins around which is also separate from the outer race <laughs> and within those is actually an hourglass shape these are broken in half but an hourglass shaped kind of exactly like that uh, roller and you can see it actually does it would sit inside and the clearances are set up such that everything is supposed to be uh, separate and rotatable and you know once you break it off from your build plate so that's the way it should have worked uh, that was at point two and it, it got stuck and it didn't work this is the same as well so I uh, down the resolution to 0.1 millimeter and I figured that might give me a little greater control. There's there's less um, material extruded per layer, so maybe the, the tolerances will be better. And that was actually right. <laughs> so these ones that I printed off uh, worked pretty much right off. Now, the one thing I will say, this is gold PLA, and it's like a lot slicker uh, than the other um, types of PLA that I have. And I'm not sure the brand of this, but... I figured that that would be good because maybe it has less friction between the sliding parts. And what was actually interesting was I printed these off of, um, give me one sec. So I printed these off of uh, like a raft and I thought that would actually make the first layers, if that is the problem that I was having, that would uh, help immensely because then the elephant footing would be on the raft and then the layers afterwards would be much easier to separate and less prone to sticking. And as you can see here, uh, the gold filament just separated perfectly cleanly. However, the the black and the gray filament 
I had kind of a rough time. I actually had to use a razor blade and uh, sort of cut them apart, especially the gray was stuck really badly. Uh, but to interesting effects. So the gold filament actually works pretty smoothly. This one I had to lubricate uh, with WD-40. This one's a lot looser, but there's a lot more slop. And it is a lot noisier. But the gray one, the gray PLA, this is PLA Plus. And I believe this is Inland brand or something like that. I got it from Micro Center. The gray bearings are like super kind of loose, but they're a lot less friction than the gold ones, which I thought was rather interesting. And these I had to scrape with a razor blade uh, to separate it from the raft. But yeah, especially this design on the gray one, it just feels so smooth. Now, obviously, there is some friction in there, but I love how as you rotate it, you can see the the little like wheels rotating as well as the race, as well as the the center um, frame part. I just think these look really cool. And additionally, I printed it out in black PLA. This is regular PLA, not PLA plus. Not sure what brand these are. Uh, this filament is but these work pretty well as well but not quite as well as the gray one the only one that i um i ended up lubricating was i think this one all the rest are unlubricated and they all seem to work fairly well but would probably benefit from a little bit of lubrication and the black one is obviously a lot harder to see so i think my take would be um pla plus in gray worked out the best i would think in terms of, I like seeing the moving parts a lot easier. And it rotates very freely. There is obviously friction, but a little lubrication would actually probably help out with that. But um, in terms of, you know, fiddliness and whatnot, um, so to make your bearings come out the best, uh, lower your layer height. So 0.1 or lower if you can. Smaller nozzle size will help us as well, but it'll take longer to print. So to print off two of these bearings, I think is about an hour and a half, two hours at 0.1 layer height um, on my 3D printer. And that includes uh, printing the raft as well underneath it. So not too bad. And obviously this isn't very effective, you know, the, the most effective way of getting a bearing is just to buy one <laughs> if, you, if you're concerned with uh, accuracy, reliability, and all that. But I just thought this was really a fun idea of having 3D printed bearings that are all self-contained that you just pop off your, your print bed and they just immediately work. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, uh, this is a really random video, relatively short, uh, a little longer than my last uh, quick bit video, but... <laughs> Yeah, hopefully you guys are um, interested in this kind of stuff. I really like the idea of uh, functional 3D parts that you know need no extra components that you just pop off the print bed and you're good to go. And I actually did uh, end up using, I printed out another one of, um, I think the gold ones, I think this one, I printed out a second one. And I stuck that in my, um, I printed a filament guide. And that's actually sitting on my printer right now. And I have about 10 or 15 hours of prints on that. And it works just fine. <laughs> so yeah, these are, at least short term wise, these will work just fine. And while I wait for my actual, you know, real bearings to arrive from China. So yeah, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.